it's Mr. Wright? It is, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, up next, we have uh, people of the state of Michigan versus Donald Wright, file 22-6356FH. Mr. Wright, we are providing public access both in the courtroom and also online. Uh, we have Mr. Wright here with his lawyer, Mr. Gilbert, prosecuting attorney, Ms. Goodrich, and Agent Fagan from the Department of Corrections here for Agent Tudek. And we're here for sentencing on a charge of assault with intent to commit sexual penetration, a 10 year felony. Mr. Gilbert, have you had a chance to review the pre sentence report with your client? Oh, we have, Your Honor. Any additions or corrections? Uh, there was just one correction, Your Honor, on the first page of the evaluation and plan, uh, the third paragraph down. Uh, in, in describing uh, my client being adopted, it says Dante was adopted. The second sentence of the uh, third paragraph Dante were adopted by the rights. That should be Donald was adopted by the rights because Dante is his brother. Well, it says he and his biological brother, Deontay, were adopted by the rights. Did the rights adopt them both? Oh, I misread that, Your Honor. Uh, my, my fault. I misread it. Okay, no, forget that is correct. No worries. The advisory guidelines are at five to 23 months in the scoring challenge. I did, Your Honor. Uh, when I went through that, I wanted to point out that I, I when I went through it, I would be four. I didn't think she be scored at 10. I understand that uh, actual treatment is not necessary on OB uh, uh, four for psychological uh, damage, but I did want to read through the reports. I didn't see whether there have been any claim of that. And so I was I'm questioning OB4 and also I would question OB8. That's the transportation? Yes, the transportation. I, I know we look, uh, there was a car involved, but I don't necessarily, in my reading of it, think that it was uh, to another place of greater damage or, uh, or that uh, the young lady was held longer than to commit this. The offense. So I was questioning OB8. I thought that should be a zero. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pitter. Just to we'll take him one at a time here. OB4 was scored at 10 points for a serious psychological injury. Uh, the defense objections that should be scored at zero. Your response to that? Uh, Your Honor, uh, it does talk about uh, without having the victim have to testify, it does talk about in the agent's description of offense how uh, she delayed reporting due to her fear as a result of that incident. I think that the description of offense reflects the psychological trauma that she went through. Do you know if the victim's intending to make a impact statement today? She or? is. Well, I mean, perhaps we. Based on what's in the pre sentence report, I would not score it because the fear during the offense does not support that score uh, under the case law. And the probation agent's belief that anybody would have experienced a psychological harm also under the case law does not support the score. If we have a victim here that's making an impact statement, I think we should probably hear that statement um, before I make a decision whether there's sufficient uh, record evidence for that. Um, so maybe we should go out of order and take the victim impact statement now. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'd ask that Alyssa watch if I'll be able to speak Okay. All right. Go ahead and tell me anything that you wish me to know before I sentence Mr. Wright. Okay. I would like to say that it strongly impacted the way I live my life every day now. I feel like I can't walk alone at night or anywhere alone without feeling like someone's going to do something to me. Um, it hurt my mental health badly, and I did hurt myself because of it. Um, and during that, I hurt the people around me as well. And I can't bring myself to walk alone anywhere. And the way I see people before isn't the same way I see them now. Like. I can't hang out with like my guy friends anymore by myself. I don't even trust hanging out with my girlfriends by myself anymore. Um, I don't really trust older family members anymore because of it. And I think he deserves the maximum amount he can get because he's a grown man and I was 15 and he knew better than what he did. Thank you. I'm Jessica Bourbon, her mother. 
this, this, this was really bad, really bad. We spent sleepless nights with that little girl. She'd hurt herself, she cut herself, she tried to commit suicide, she was stealing alcohol. I mean, I don't even, I didn't even know what to do. It was so bad. I didn't even want to leave her bedside. It was that bad. I made her sleep on the couch so I could hear if she moved to make sure that anytime she needed me, I was there. So I knew, I just wanted to make sure that nothing will ever happen to her again. I don't, I can't really prevent it, but I will try my hardest to be there for her in anything or something like this. It's not the first time it's happened to her and it's bad that it happened again. And not by the same person, but it, it sucks to have to deal with this all over again with her. Mr. Gerber, any further argument on the Mr. Richie, any further argument? Oh, Your Honor, I think that the uh, testimony of the victim establishes that there was uh, psychological harm. <laughs> I agree. The victim described how it's impacted her life since the offense. In fact, uh, some self-harm and affecting her relationships with other people, including friends and broken trust and, and fearful. Yeah, so I'll leave OB4 scored at 10 points. <clears throat> now, in terms of OB8, it is scored at <clears throat> 15 points for asportation. And the defense objects that there's insufficient evidence of that. It should be scored at zero. Ms. Goodrich, your response? Oh, Your Honor, the defendant was uh, driving his vehicle with uh, the victim in it at the time of the sexual assault. They were in the vehicle. Um, I believe that the victim had talked about in the agent's description of the offense uh, how the defendant talked to her about a gun. Uh, when she was with him previously, she had seen that he had a gun that was tan in color. And uh, while this time didn't... Um, actually see the gun, he was alluding to it, which made her afraid uh, during this and caused uh, some of the fear and delay in reporting the hearing. Thank you. I would, um, I would leave the score at 15 points, not, not really because of the, the gun or the fear of that, but under that uh, offense variable, um, you score 15 points if a victim was asked forwarded to another place of greater danger or to a situation of greater danger <clears throat> or held captive beyond the time necessary to commit the offense. The held captive beyond the time necessary to commit the offense is, is you know, a closer call. He does say we're not leaving until something happens, but, uh, but the something is really the assault. But I do think even though she left the house to go hang out with him, she didn't ask to go down to a dead end road at 11 p.m. at night and be isolated by this defendant. And so I think that is a place of greater danger for the defendant to bring a minor child to a dead end road at night uh, where he can commit a crime against that person. So I'll leave OB8 scored at 15 points. Thank you, Ms. Kurdish. Do you have any scoring challenges? No, yeah. The court has one. Uh, OV. 10, <clears throat> exploitation of a vulnerable victim was scored at 10 points for the offender exploiting a victim's physical disability, mental disability, or youth. Uh, I think certainly there's grounds for that and nobody's objected, but I wonder whether it should instead be scored at 15 points for predatory conduct based upon the fact that the um, there was some pre-offense conduct here in that this defendant uh, purchased vapes uh, for this minor that she was not on previous occasions. So he's sort of establishing himself as uh, someone that will provide things for her and he's manipulating her in that fashion. Um, so I wanna hear from both counsel on whether that constitutes predatory conduct as pre-offense conduct directed at a victim for the primary purpose of victimization. Mr. Gilbert? Well, my position on that would be, Your Honor, that uh, the um, the vapes and the, per uh, the purchase thereof were done independently, and it wasn't. I don't think there is any direct correlation to um, 
for uh, for then joining up with him and this incident happening. Um, again, I, I believe that ten points should be scored here because of the youth. Uh, however, I don't. Know, I in reading through it, I did not think that that purchasing of that was predatory or grooming or that type of thing. Uh, is just because he was uh, doing it as a, as a friend will do it or that type of thing, even though she was underage and couldn't do it herself. Okay, thank you, Ms. Goodrich. Oh, Your Honor, I believe that does meet the definition of the predatory conduct pursuant to MCL 777.403A, uh, the pre-offense conduct as the court described um, for the primary purpose of victimization. He did this while uh, luring her to the car. Um, and so I believe that that does qualify. All right, I, I do think that that's uh, sufficient evidence of uh, pre-offense conduct where he's gaining her trust, he's providing her stuff that she can't otherwise obtain on her own, he's befriending her on social media, he's obtaining vapes for her, you know, he's an adult, uh, providing a minor with things that they're not allowed to have, and then, you know, he's leveraging that relationship to end up isolating her and sexually assault her, uh, so I'm going to score OB10 at 15 points. It doesn't change the ultimate guideline score, but it does increase the OB to 70 points, still OB level five and a guideline range of five to 23. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, anything you'd like to say on behalf of your client? Uh, yes, Your Honor. In, in this case, um, and not to, to minimize at all uh, what had happened or what the victim has gone through, I would like the court to take into consideration. I, I did ask for forensic in this case because, uh, and none of that has changed with my interviews of Mr. Wright. Um, he's, um, I told him I was gonna say this because it's true, he's very slow and uh, has a very hard time processing things. Um, and after I had to explain the whole procedure, even as this case de uh, developed over and over again, and be asked the same question over and over again, it's pretty obvious that cognitively um, he's not where he should be. Uh, I do believe that probably played a major role in this case um, in not understanding the consequences of what of what was happening or how, how severe the conduct was. Uh, so I, I do ask the court to take that into consideration. Um, and I said, as I said, it, it's obvious that I've been thinking about that from the beginning due to my request for the forensic. Uh, even though we passed, uh, that there was issues, and I think these issues existed and are part of the reason. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. It's not required that you would make a statement, but it is allowed. Is there anything you wish to say or no? Um, yes, I would uh, like to formally uh, apologize to the clerks, uh, to the victim, her family. Uh, I'm sorry that I did that to John. And, uh, upon getting released, whether it's um, from here, whether I go to prison, I'm looking for uh, guidance and uh, seeking help. And I'll be all. Right, thank you. Ms. Goodrich, any recommendations from the people? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we've discussed uh, what occurred in this case. Uh, the defendant is 21 years old with no criminal history. He is unemployed with a high school degree. Uh, the recommendation is 23 months to 10 years with credit for 347 days. Uh, we did have a sentencing agreement to a uh, county jail cap thinking uh, five-year probation uh, due to the defendant's young age and that the no contact would continue for those five years to assist the victim in feeling safe. However, Thank you. Well, Mr. Wright, um, you're here for sentencing on a assault with intent to commit a sexual penetration. It's a reduced charge from the charge of criminal sexual conduct in the third degree. Now, you, uh, you confessed to the police before you even entered a plea here, you confessed to the police that you had sex with this underage victim. So your guilt on the CSC third is pretty evident. And the victim describes further, it, although you didn't confess to this part, that this was a forcible rape and under the threat or perceived threat of a gun that you had in the car and she was fearful. Of course, I'm going to sentence you to prison. So it would be my intention to sentence you on the upper end of these guidelines to 23 months in prison to 10 years. 
That's the most I can do under the guidelines. I don't see a reason to exceed those. I'll give you credit for 347 days previously served. $68 in state cost, 130 crime victims assessment, $60 DNA fee, $350 in court costs. You're on the sex offender registry, which has already happened. And uh, that would be my sentence, Mr. Wright. Now that does go beyond what the plea agreement was, which included a sentence agreement for a county cap. So if you wish, you can withdraw your plea and then you can go to trial on the CSC third. I'm gonna give you a minute to talk with your attorney and see if what you wanna do, if you wanna go forward with the sentence I announced, whether you wish to withdraw your plea or whether you wish more time to think. So let's uh, give you a minute, Mr. Your Honor, yeah, um, yeah. would the court consider possibly- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. Um, would the court consider possibly um, maybe adjourning the sentencing? Because um, we know we know this would give me an opportunity to sit down with them. Well, let me, let me talk, let, let, okay. I want you to talk to them first. Maybe you know. I uh, I admire this judge. He takes this stuff seriously. It is refreshing to see when we are so accustomed to the many judges in Louisiana seemingly going out of their way to give the lightest sentence possible. In this case, he identifies what actually has happened and gives the maximum sentence possible. What do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's going to opt for a jury trial? I think that would be a big mistake. But then again, what does he have to lose, right? Can he get a longer sentence? I don't think so. But it would be the cost. But let's see. Right? If he can't get a longer sentence, then what does he have to lose about doing a jury trial except for the cost, which it might not cost him anything because he has probably wouldn't because he has an appointed lawyer. So it would just be the embarrassment if he has any shame. Let's see. Let's fast forward. And uh, Mr. Gilbert, you've had some time to talk to Mr. Uh, Wright. Do you need some more time to go over yeah, those options? Well, Mr. Wright, it's it's a big decision with a lot of factors. So uh, I will go ahead and continue this sentencing then to May 9th at 3 p.m. At that time, you can uh, advise the court whether you wish to go forward with the sentence as I've announced or whether you wish to withdraw your plea and go to trial. Mr. Wright, I don't want you to make a decision right now that you regret in five minutes or five days or five months. I want you to take some time to think about it. So I think we'll, we'll come back on May 9th and give you the time to talk to Mr. Wright. Okay. Excellent. So we have Yeah, yeah waiting to May 9th doesn't increase by a single day how long you're going to be behind the so let's just give you time to think about that and talk to you more. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Okay. All right, next I see Ms. Ashley Stevens. Okay. So I'm not sure why 
it seemed at the beginning that he was going to have him make a decision then, and then he just kicked the ball down the road, which actually, seems, to me, seems to make a lot of sense. But, you know, it, it's interesting that there it seemed like there could have been a scenario where the victim would, would not have been allowed to make a statement before the sentencing. And uh, as you all know, I'm not an attorney, and I don't claim to be one. I, I'm not familiar with this like point system for the type of crime that he made and how the points are kind of accumulated, which then result in the minimum or maximum sentence. But it certainly is positive to see the maximum sentence. And for some reason, he... <laughs> He thought that he might not get any sentence at all. You, you heard what the judge had said. Uh, and um, it's just, it's, it's terrifying to think that, that this isn't even the first time it's happened to this victim. And then her poor mother, her poor mother, you really you really hear the trauma in her mother's voice. And um, but give them credit for having the courage to get up and speak. But it, it is nice to see a judge come out here and give the maximum the maximum sentence. If I do catch, oh, thank you, Richard, for actually sending this to me. So, Richard, uh, if you send me the follow-up date, and we'll find out if he does decide to go to trial. You know, it's interesting. If he does decide to go to trial, then we'll cover it. We'll cover it here. Uh, I guess from his perspective, he has nothing to lose. If he's, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know if if you can add on charges. I don't think so. So. I can't imagine that the attorney would want to go to trial as a public def defender. And I wonder if because of that, he will influence his client's decision. But again, I don't know how that works. We have a conf confession on record and, and we have uh, victims, survivors, that have shown that they will get in front of a judge and make a statement. So my guess would be is that he just takes the sentence and goes on his way, scurries into another you know, it's like doing that to a minor raping an underage girl, taking her in your car to an alley, threatening with weapon and making her do, it's just like, and then for him to think that he actually thought that maybe I won't get a sentence. He'll send me to some program. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe other judges would have done that, sir, but not, not Judge Aaron Gothier, if I pronounced his name right. I know it's, I've heard it many times, but not in his, not in his house, sir. Not in his house. With that, I'll let you go.